Hello and welcome to my Astronomy Nights. I'm Derek and in this video I'm looking at NGC 2403. Now NGC 2403 is a nice intermediate spiral galaxy in the constellation of Camelopardalis. This is nice and near the celestial pole so it makes it circumpolar from northern latitudes like mine and it gives it a really good window of opportunity throughout the year for observing and imaging. Now Camelopardalis is quite an obscure constellation. It's only got stars in or around magnitude 4 so not a lot of naked eye stars in this region. Alpha Camelopardalis is about 15 degrees away from NGC 2403 so I found the easiest thing to do was to use the nose star of Ursa Major, this being Mosquita or Omicron Ursa Majoris and that was just about 7 degrees away and there's a couple of nice little prominent stars there from Camelopardalis uh, 51 Camelopardalis and then there's two magnitude 6 stars that can lead you across to 57 Camelopardalis and then NGC 2403 is just 50 arc minutes away so you will get the two of them within a nice wide field eyepiece and I was using my 12 inch Dobsonian for tracking this one down so it had a focal length of 1500 millimeters but I was still able to see um, uh, 57 Camelopardalis in the same field of view uh, with it. Now using the finder scope it was the best option and I was able to star hop across those four stars to find it and it worked worked multiple times. I used it the same way coming back. I couldn't find an easier way to start hop to it um, when I was looking. Now I'm sure there is other ways, but I found this was the best for me. So NGC 2403 is a spiral galaxy in Camelopardalis. This isn't one of the Messier objects, but it is large and bright. It has a magnitude of 8.6 and it measures 10 by 12 minutes of arc. It's an intermediate spiral galaxy, so it has a nice bright core and a loose structure in the arms. Um, this is kind of dotted throughout by star forming regions and H2 regions uh, within the galaxy and it gives it a kind of mottled look. And this, it looks quite similar to M33, the Triangulum Galaxy, so it does get the nickname of the Little Triangulum Galaxy. Now the largest one of these uh, star forming regions is um, NGC 2404 and this is visible in a large aperture. I was using a 12 inch and you can just see it as a slightly fuzzy star um, just to the east of the core um, within it. But the, the arm structure is very difficult to pick out. You need good skies to, to try to find some of that arm structure beyond the central portion. So to get my astrophoto of NGC 2403 I used the 200 PDS from Skywatcher that's got a 1000mm focal length and I had my QHY 163 mono camera on it. Um, I coupled this with a set of LRGB filters from ZWO and I was able to get three nights uh, on this. Uh, the first two nights I just used the luminance filter on it and just got the, the mono um, camera imaging. And then on the last night, I was able to split it up between the RGB and I got a, just over a full hour on each of those. And then I was able to get that final image from uh, putting the two of those together. Uh, it was nice to be able to get that detail in those little um, star forming regions. But again, I, I think it would take multiple, multiple nights to get more of that arm structure and to get a bit better at my post processing. I was observing this with my 12 inch Dobsonian and I used my 82 degree field of view 24 millimeter Explore Scientific eyepiece mostly and a 16 millimeter Nirvana eyepiece and it has the same kind of a field of view and it worked really well. It's a little tricky to track it down but once you have it in the eyepiece it, it, it's quite nice. You can use those little stars in the center to track down that H2 region uh, NGC 2404 and you can pick it up as a little hazy star nearby just to the east of the core. Um, it's quite a nice one. I was, it, it held up 
not so great under any moonlight, but when you have new moon, you can really get some that detail out of the, the bright core. Difficult altitude if you're if you have a similar northern latitude to me, because at the start of the night it's it was quite high up. It's it's dropped down now, but um, when I started observing this uh, last month, it was quite high. So star hopping with a, a manual Dobsonian is quite difficult when you're at that kind of up near the zenith. So this time this time of year now it's it's much better because you have a more comfortable angle with the telescope. So observing NGC 2403 was a tricky experience. I had no luck on my first few nights. I got fogged out of it on two nights because I was um, I was observing this in tandem with 3718 in Ursa Major. There's a pairing of galaxies there. And when I'd move on to this one, I had no luck just through um, thick fog. But on the third night, anyways, it cleared up and I was able to get a really good night. Uh, it's quite bright, the central portion is quite bright and it has a magnitude overall of 8.4 but the central core region would be a little bit brighter than that I think. Uh, there's two nice little stars that anchor either side of that central core region and you can really focus on those, you can bring out a couple of more and if you keep your eye trained between those two you can pick out some of the more dimmer stars in the foreground and amongst those there are a couple of little um, hydrogen 2 regions, the little star forming regions within the galaxy. So in observing NGC 2403, it takes a little time. You have to tease out that detail around the edges and it takes a while as well to get your eye trained on it for finding NGC 2404. Um, you can use a little bit of magnification on it. I went up to about 100 power on this one and it held up really well especially when i was trying to track down um, ngc 2404 i used my 16 millimeter nirvana eyepiece and i was able to get in that and it looked really nice i was able to get it with averted vision while hopping my eye between those two little stars that sit either side of that central portion so after a couple of false starts observing this one i was quite happy with the few nights i had on it and I definitely recommend observing it. It really holds up well in a telescope and it has a few little interesting features to hunt down. The imaging was quite tricky and I'm definitely hoping to get some um, RGB data on this in the coming weeks. Until next time, clear skies!